And a very warm welcome to this wonderful occasion here at the University of Strathclyde, where over the next 45 minutes or so we're going to celebrate the fantastic achievements of our graduates here before me in the hall and also in the stage. Uh, and uh, welcome to a wonderful sunny autumn day in Glasgow. For those of you who don't come here very often, it's always sunny like this in Glasgow. <laughs> we have very little rain at this time of the year, so enjoy the weather whilst you may. Uh, we mentioned the Barony Hall, uh, jewel in the crown of our estate. We do many things here. We have uh, major events, conferences, uh, showcase uh, dinners and the likes, but most importantly, we have our graduation ceremonies. Uh, each year, Strathclyde has grown to the scale now where we graduate over 4,000 students per annum, uh, around about 1,500 at this time of the year. And for every one of you, uh, there's a very important person in the hall who will be graduating, celebrating their fantastic achievements. And in days like this, it's a, it's a wonderful occasion in any case. But occasionally, we get a chance to adorn the ceremony by us celebrating outstanding professional achievements by people that are associated with the university. And this morning is one of those occasions where we have an outstanding engineer, Professor Steve Williamson, who's here on the stage with us. He will be introduced to you shortly by Professor Stephen MacArthur. Uh, and he'll be receiving an honorary degree in advance of me conferring the degrees on these outstanding students within the engineering faculty. So with that, friends, families, supporters, graduates, enjoy the ceremony. And I'll now declare the ceremony formally open and invite Professor MacArthur to the podium. Thank you very much indeed. Principal and Vice-Chancellor, I have the honour and privilege of presenting Professor Steve Williamson. Professor Williamson is an internationally recognised expert in electrical machines. These are the devices which convert mechanical energy to electrical energy or electrical energy into mechanical energy. His research was focused on developing advanced mathematical models for induction machines for everyday use in the design office. Such machines are universally used to drive pumps, fans, and compressors in industry, commerce, and the domestic environment. His overall aim was to improve energy efficiency at no increased manufacturing cost. This meant that Professor Williamson, with great prescience, anticipated the current concerns about the efficient use of energy. To put this in context, the government's data estimates that in 2018, 77% of all electrical energy consumed by UK industry was used in electrical machines. His successes are underpinned by his ethos that engineering isn't engineering unless you use it. That means his career has been based on linking his academic research to industry, working directly with industrial partners at all stages and in many ways, which we'll hear more about as I go on. I'd like to start by giving you all a flavour of Steve's academic career and achievements. He grew up in Manchester and came through his 11 plus exam with flying colours to get to the local grammar school. This gave him the platform for his first degree, which involved a move to London to study electrical engineering at Imperial College. Having secured his first class honours Bachelor of Science degree, he continued on to his PhD there. He received this in 1973 for his doctoral thesis on the design and analysis of pole changing and varying air gap shaded pole motors. Following a short postdoctoral research position at Imperial College, Steve took up his first academic post as a lecturer. He had the good sense to start his lecturing career in Scotland and joined the University of Aberdeen. He then moved back to Imperial College in London as a senior lecturer before becoming a reader in electrical machines. His first appointment as a professorship was at Cambridge, where he became Professor of Electrical Power Engineering and a Fellow of St. John's College in 1989. I mentioned earlier about Steve's focus on working closely with industry for the benefit of engineering, for the benefit of engineering research, and for the benefit of the wider community. This resonates strongly with Strathclyde's ethos of being a place of useful learning, and our drive for impactful industry and academic collaboration our recognition of Steve's achievement, achievements today arises from our shared vision for delivering industrial and societal value from engineering research. In terms of industry engagement, he has acted as a consultant for a wide range of UK and international companies, including Lawrence Scott, Brush, GEC Alstom, Emerson Electric, Leroy Sommer, 
and A.O. Smith. He also spent 15, chairs, uh, 15 years as chairman of Rolls-Royce's Electrical and Controls Advisory Board. This was one of four boards of external advisors that provided advice directly to Rolls-Royce's main executive board. He is currently a non-executive director of Tesla Engineering, to which he always quickly points out has nothing to do with Tesla cars. Steve is unusual in that having been a successful professor at Cambridge for around eight years, he decided to leave the university to join industry and become the group technical director for Invensys Brook Compton. This company was a leading provider of energy efficient electric motors. I mentioned earlier the amount of energy used by electrical machines and the importance of improved efficiency. In his industry role, Steve contributed to the definition and introduction of new international standards to prevent the sale of low efficiency machines. And although he moved into industry, the lure of a university post was strong. And after three years at Invensys Brook Compton, he joined UMIST as professor of electrical engineering and two years later became the head of department of electrical engineering. At this point, Steve was back in Manchester where he and his family came from. This upbringing led to another of his passions, football, and more specifically, Manchester United. Steve often claims that he comes from a split home, but before we pity him too much, all he means is his dad was a Manchester City fan and his mum was a Manchester United fan. I mention all of this because Steve was at UMIST, that is the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology, when it merged with the Victoria University of Manchester. He often told people at the time that its new name was going to be Manchester United University. I think he was disappointed when this didn't come about. And if you follow football, then I think you'll agree that Steve's achievement, achievements match the performance of the Alex Ferguson Manchester United rather than the current team. And getting back to those achievements, it is worth noting that his academic career and industry engagement and experience gave him the broad range of leadership and innovation skills that led to him being successful in his other roles. In 2009, he joined the University of Surrey as the Deputy Vice President of Research and Innovation, and he retired from there in 2013 and as an Emeritus Professor at the University. But in no way did this mark the end of his contribution to engineering. The UK government benchmarks all university research at periodic intervals. This is an enormous UK-wide activity where the universities provide details of all of their research publications, grants, achievements and outcomes over a six or seven year period. A large panel of experts assesses discipline area by discipline area and then rate and rank all the universities. These were originally known as a research assessment exercise and more recently as a research excellence framework. Steve was a member of the panel for electrical and electronic engineering in 2001 and then chaired it in 2008 and 2014. This means he was responsible for accurately and effectively assessing all electronic and electrical engineering research in the UK for nearly 15 years. He now undertakes the same role in Hong Kong. And he's currently supporting Strathclyde's preparation for the next research excellence framework assessment in 2021. And he's giving us his insight, experience and expertise as we prepare our engineering submission. He's also heavily engaged within the Royal Academy of Engineering. This brings together the most successful and talented engineers from across the profession, known as Fellows of the Royal Academy of Engineering, or FRNG. Their role is to advance and promote excellence in engineering for the benefit of society. Steve became a Fellow of this in 1995. The Royal Academy of Engineering has three strategic priorities, make the UK the leading nation for engineering, innovation and business, address the engineering skills crisis and position engineering at the heart of society. Steve helps him to achieve this with his expertise and skills delivered through his membership on or chairing of the research committee, the research chair steering group and the Queen Elizabeth Prize for Engineering Search Committee. Steve's contributions have also been widely recognised internationally. In 2000, he was awarded an Achievement Medal by the then Institution of Electrical Engineers. This is now known as the Institution of Engineering and Technology, the IET, and it only awards Achievement Medals to individuals who make an exceptional contribution to the advancement of engineering and technology. In 2001, he was awarded the IEEE 
Nikola Tesla Award, with his nomination stating, for the development of advanced mathematical models and computational tools for induction machine design. This is only awarded to individuals who have made outstanding contributions to the generation and utilization of electric power. The IEEE organization that awards it is the world's largest professional engineering society. In addition to these highly prestigious awards, he has also received awards for his academic publications. Premium prizes are awarded for the best publication in a field over a two-year period, and Professor Williamson has won seven of these. In conclusion, Professor Williamson is a highly accomplished academic researcher in his field and also a highly successful leader in the wider engineering societies and academies. He is internationally re renowned and also a strong and long-term collaborator, supporter and friend of the University of Strathclyde. His desire to work closely with industry and deliver real impact means he fits in perfectly with our university ambitions and objectives. Principal and Vice-Chancellor, in recognition of his exceptional contributions to energy efficiency and for his international impact in advanced mathematical models for induction machines, it gives me very great pleasure to present to you Professor Steve Williamson for the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. I create you Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Uh, outstanding achievements, Steve, throughout your career. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to the Strathclyde family formally. Many congratulations. Well done. I want to begin by saying what a great honour it is to receive this award. I am both pleased and grateful. Thank you, Strathclyde. I'd also like to thank P Professor MacArthur for his generous oration. It felt like my whole life was passing in front of me, um, hopefully without the usual consequences. <laughs> when I was given the opportunity to address you, I was given two piece of, uh, pieces of advice. One, don't speak for more than five minutes. And two, don't tell any embarrassing stories about the Vice-Chancellor. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. In his oration, Professor MacArthur mentioned the merger of UMIST with the Victoria University of Manchester. To continue that story, uh, another suggested name was for the new university was going to be the David and Victoria University of Manchester. Once the, merger talks, uh, um, once the merger talks had started, we had to, bring, we had to bring in branding consultants to advise us of what the new name really ought to be. They charged us a lot of money and came up with a brilliant suggestion of calling it the University of Manchester. <laughs> and the point at which I knew the merger would go ahead was when the two vice chancellors decided to um, to, to, to synchronize their retirement on the, on the proposed day. This avoided what I often think of as the Highlander problem. Um, you will know possibly the film Highlander, which involves Im immortals, and when they meet, one has to decapitate the other one and raise his sword and go, there can only be one. <laughs> what can I say about my career? The overarching thing is that it has been exciting, challenging, and also fun. Well, for most of the time. Engineers are problem solvers, and your course will, will have trained you to find solutions to practical problems. I hope that many of you will find careers in engineering, but I know that the skills that you've acquired will also make you a tasty dish in many other sectors. Indeed, in some countries, and particularly in Asia, political leaders are more likely to have tra trained as engineers, as opposed to historians, lawyers, economists, which seems to be our fate in the UK. 
Many of the great challenges that face the world today are practical problems that call for engineering solutions, such as the further development of renewable energy sources, pollution-free transport means of transport, and, the, and mitigating the consequences of climate change. I must confess, I am quite envious of the tremendous opportunities that are out there for you. You really do have the opportunity to make a difference. And the UK is not producing enough engineers to meet demand. And this is a, a significant threat to the UK's economy. As a consequence, there are numerous initiatives aimed at attracting more young people to study engineering at university. It's fitting that this celebration to mark your achievements is being held during the week designated as Tomorrow's Engineers Week by, the, by Engineering UK, which is a not-for-profit organisation that works with the engineering community to inspire engineers. In, in addition, tomorrow just happens to be This is Engineering Day, marking the launch of the next phase of the Royal Academy's campaign to attract more, more school leavers to engineering careers. The, this, is, uh, this is Engineering uh, is a series of um, short videos which portray the various interesting, th the variety of jobs that engineers undertake. And those of you not involved in engineering, I would commend it to, to you very highly and you can easily find it on, uh, on, on, through Google. So, um, I'm nearly at the end. And what I want to do is to congratulate my fellow graduates for a number of reasons. Not just for their splendid achievement, which is being celebrated today. Not just for attending this prestigious university, which enjoys a well-deserved international reputation for excellence, especially for its engineering courses, but also for having the foresight and good sense to choose engineering to study at university in the first place. I wish you all, my fellow graduates, all the success, excitement, and yes, fun, that I've had enjoyed in my almost 50 years since I, sat, since I sat in your position in a similar, similar ceremony. Thank you. Principal and Vice-Chancellor, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Engineering for Research in the Department of Biomedical Engineering, Gabor Varconi. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for Research in the Department of Architecture, Svetomila Antoliva Doncheva. <laughs> Amira Nagi Mahmoud Elsmalawi. <laughs> For research in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Lisa Ann Miller. For the degree of Master of Science in Advanced Construction Technologies and Building Information Management, Sonia Dinsey von Webben. <laughs> Noor Hamza. <laughs> Abdullah Hatem Mohammed Sami El Shafi. John Alexander Miller. <laughs> Ru Yao Zhu. <laughs> In Sustainable Engineering, Architecture and Ecology, Anna Christine Buchanan. <laughs> Chi Go.
in urban design, Lishan Kui. Tarek Fuani. Stephen Herity. William Kerr. Gillian Rene Mona. Li Ying Xi'an. Jai Lu Shi. Miguel Silva Barrow. In architectural design for the conservation of built heritage, Amna Malik. Fiona Ann Park. Alma Sigurda Dotia. In biomedical engineering, Edward ha Abila. Amberley Ann Almond. Yanis Bugadis. Lucina Malgosata Chirian. Gia Chopra. Francesca Fabricotti. Alexander Stephen Ferguson. Sarah Elizabeth Francis. Aisha Sinat Hanif. Megan Ashley Howarth. Ishwarya Vishwash Kadam. Ephthalia Caramarco. <laughs> Olivia Lala. <laughs> Mihi Alexandru Mahers. <laughs> Arete Miarate. <laughs> Simon J. Parkinson. Sarah Maria Patterson. <laughs> Ryland Durley Swiringa. <laughs> Anita Eva Vidarsodeta. <laughs> In prosthetics and orthotics, Charlotte Elizabeth Bosman. Stephanie Casley. Ashabi at Santander Wynn. Tanja Shera. Bi Ying Cheng. In Biofluid Mechanics, Matthew Dowen. <laughs> Macy Keogh. <laughs> In Environmental Engineering, Jason Erickson. <laughs> Victoire Denise Genevieve Mari Riscala. Coco Anatas. <laughs> Ru 
Reeve Wishart. <laughs> In environmental entrepreneurship, Florence Orofkumu Akropoji. <laughs> Sonia Cecilia Canonen. Fraser Duncan Miller. Andrea Portelli. In civil engineering, Ian James Altsop. Anarud Arun Manjul. Angus David Ian Robertson. <laughs> Callum Sidney. <laughs> In civil engineering with structural engineering and project management, Kavi Kazani Darlu. <laughs> Fraser Proctor. In Sustainability and Environmental Studies, Mahmoud Aisa Abdullah Nasser Al Mohassin. <laughs> bon Moi Fouakal. <laughs> Georgios Calivas. <laughs> Lucy Marianne McCulloch. Callum James David McKenna. <laughs> Elisa Marchison. <laughs> Adam David Patterson. <laughs> Anna Rondell. <laughs> Chloe White. In hydrogeology, Lewis David Bradwell. <laughs> Michael Kane. <laughs> Natasha Caron. <laughs> Stephen Gresham Msopa Cum Wenda. Jamie McMurchie. <laughs> Ailey Louise Peddy. <laughs> Matthew Kerr Rain. <laughs> Charles Gavin Stafford. Martin James Stephen. <laughs> Abigail Elizabeth Urquhart. <laughs> In civil engineering with industrial placement with geotechnical engineering and project management, Amit Ashok Jadhav. In Environmental Health Sciences, Melissa Estima. <laughs> Mac Anthony Ezenia Norum. <laughs> Mindy Francis Panulo. For the degree of Master of Architecture in Advanced Architectural Design, Catherine Elizabeth Allen. <laughs> Michelle Ann. <laughs> Dua Arkub. <laughs> Emilia Maria Borowicz. 
Liam Byrne. Ryan Carroll Cole. Hugo Rafael da Monta Silva. Monica Nikoleva Dimitrova. Hilmi Ziev Zambarazov. Jodie Glennon. Theodore Mihel Hadirsa. Joanna Heath. Alice Louise Hughes. Shubnam Dilip Jane. Marina Kafantari. Joanna Kinga Kakol. Alexandra Kartaku. Khalif Adito Kunbo Kalasio. Delina Krushkova. Gerard Chun Long Lam. Oristis Lisoka Antonio. Shock Ann Andy Lee. Kieran McCallion. Richard McKellas. Natalia Maria Malishka. Antonios Manginas. Daphne Mikalaki. Boris Milanov Milanov. Rianne Nicole Modrawi. Charlotte Nelson. Eleftherius Nin Eos. Panayotis Panayotu. Charalampos Panzris. Pavel Christov Pavlov. Jonathan James Powell. Samantha Jane Russell. Irina Selesniova. Rennie Song. David Sutherland Campbell. Raphael Toublon Brewster. Denitsa Momchilova Velikova. Valdis Vildavs. Marielle Sofia Wallen. Jonathan Robert Walsh. Nicola Wilson. In Architectural Design International, 
Ida Rosida Binti Salaji. Kishav Goyal. Akala Karna. Lo Yik Lun. Lee Wai Keen. Lu Pei Chi. Yuash Lim Yun An. Lim Yu Ki. Noor Hu Hidaya Binti Lockman. Kasim Sharif Khan Pathan. Shah Ka Joy. Sharon Wong. For the degree of Master of Engineering in Civil Engineering, Leon Elisha Balin. Ellis Kenan Ibri Amova. In Civil and Environmental Engineering, Peter Donald. Mark McShane. Lewis Niall Hamilton Russell. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering, Finn Alexander Hall. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Architectural Studies, Galia Yankova Vasileva. Alan Hock Man Lam. For the postgraduate diploma in advanced architectural design, Zainab Tahir Bashir. Shelley Rachel Crawford. Jamie Stewart McCallum. Massimo Sanino. In biomedical engineering, Tori Tuxon. In civil engineering with industrial placement, Apurva Vewayahari. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's give the class of 2019 a big collective round of applause. Once again, graduates, as I can call you now, ladies and gentlemen, let me reiterate our very warm welcome to this wonderful ceremony, a day that none of you will forget. It marks the successful conclusion of years of hard work and dedication, and now you've graduated in front of your friends, your families, and indeed your classmates. And today, as you've seen, we welcome visitors from all parts of Scotland, from across the UK, and of course, from a wonderful international community. And we're delighted to see all of you here to join in the celebrations today. 
But of course, the world is a challenging place these days. And as part of the context in which you're graduating, you might take the next exciting steps into the next phase of your lives and careers with a purpose to make things better. The prevailing political dynamics here in Scotland, across the UK, throughout Europe, and indeed across the Atlantic, give us some cause for concern, but concerns that you can deal with, as you heard from Professor Williamson, engineers, architects, biomedical engineers, are problem solvers. And we need to think about the dangers of populism, divisions in society, and the seemingly unending sense of uncertainty. But of course, it's worthwhile acknowledging the roles and contributions of universities such as ours. Strathclyde is an institution where freedom of thought is valued and encouraged. We are a place that is both tolerant and inclusive, and where people of diverse national, cultural, and social backgrounds come together here on our campus to enjoy excellent education and a shared student experience. At Strathclyde, all of us benefit from having staff and students from around 120 different countries. We seek to be a socially progressive institution and one that tries to be an exemplar for modern society. We are plural and proud of it, multicultural, and we seek to be enlightened. And it's our responsibility, graduates, it's your responsibility to continue to challenge unacceptable behavior, including by those in power and by using reason and exemplifying the best features of modern society. But of course, today, most importantly, we are here to acknowledge your outstanding work, your great achievements, and the learning that you've built up, and now the successful completion of your degree courses. That will be your passport to making a full contribution within your professional career, your personal lives, and to society at large, regardless of the flux that we currently face. So we're problem solvers. Appropriately enough, Thomas Edison, another engineer, famous American inventor, reminded us that genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. But I'm sure that your own percentages would have been a little bit better than that as you worked in the library, in the labs, in your groups. I'm an engineer too. I was brought up here in Glasgow in a sunny hamlet called Govan. And our town's motto is nihil sine labore, or nothing without hard work. And I try to embrace that ethos every day. And I would recommend that you take that approach into your future careers. It's important. You're smart, you're highly achieved, you're ambitious, but uh, that ounce of hard work, dedication and commitment very often makes all the difference of getting things over the line. And today you've become Strathclyde alumni and you're the latest of our torch bearers, just like those in many generations that have gone before you. And with all that you've now successfully come through, I'm sure you would agree that you couldn't have done this without the backing, support and encouragement of the communities of supporters around you here on campus, within the academic community indeed, with your families by their home or in the, in the far distance. And it's fitting that we acknowledge their part in the successful completion of university studies. Our graduates, and indeed the university at large, owe them an enormous debt of gratitude. It's the first in my own family to have, to have gone to university, in fact here at Strathclyde University in the engineering faculty. I know the importance of such support. And today's graduates and our university staff would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you the friends, families and supporters for all that you've done to make today possible. Thank you very much indeed. And for our excellent academic staff, this is a very important day too, because ultimately your success is their reward. Strathclyde has worked hard to provide you with a high quality education and a first class university experience for all of our students regardless of background. So let me now invite our graduates here on the stage and in the hall to join me in thanking our staff for all that they've done to support you in your journey. Thank you. So as you leave us today, it's worthwhile that you either remember or learn that we were founded in 1796. So we're 223 years old this year. Although I like to lead this place in the same spirit as a 200-year-old startup, retaining that same excitement and purpose from the time of our establishment. And throughout our history, the University of Strathclyde has remained faithful to our founding principles. We were established, and I quote, for the benefit of all mankind. And we were the only higher education institution to be created here in Scotland in the time of the Scottish Enlightenment. That's a real distinction for Strathclyde. 
And we're now driving forward our strategy in that same exciting spirit, making it wholly relevant for the 21st century. Our founder, Professor John Anderson, who was a physicist or natural philosopher, as he would have been called, had a strong bond to Benjamin Franklin, the American inventor and academic. Now, Franklin himself was one of the founders of the University of Pennsylvania in 1751 under the motto of useful knowledge. And that influenced and inspired our founder, along with the great challenge of the Enlightenment itself. And we established Strathclyde through John Anderson's endowment with the motto of useful learning. And never has that motto been more relevant than it is today. It still defines our purpose as a leading international technological university, but it's also committed to being socially progressive. So for example, across our campus and in the buildings and labs that you'll have passed today on your way to the Barony Hall, our staff and students are developing drugs to diagnose and fight disease. For example, we have several drugs on clinical trials in the areas of cancer treatment, kidney disease, infection management, inflammatory diseases. Strathclyde are also producing energy technologies and policy solutions to tackle climate change and establish a low carbon economy. We are revolutionizing global manufacturing technology, helping to create what's called the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0 advanced materials, robotics, AI, automation. Our students, and I'm so proud of them, continue their work in Africa, establishing clean water and uh, power supplies, deploying healthcare systems in remote communities, and introducing new telecommunications infrastructure. They are bringing prosthetic limb and bioengineering technologies to those in need in India. We are working to inform public policy on national economic strategy and policies for education, health and energy. And our staff in one of our showcase buildings, the Technology and Innovation Centre down in George Street, are working with industry on energy, photonics, bio -nano systems, and pharmaceutical manufacturing. I mentioned Thomas Edison already. He called his technical teams in his laboratories the Inventions Factory. Well, Strathclyde refers to tech now as our Innovations Factory, where world-class research meets application. And we are now, of course, reinforcing Strathclyde's leadership in this space by having created Scotland's first innovation district down in the space between High Street, Ingram Street and George Street, uh, round about the tick building with our court's approval in the coming months. We expect to invest another £150 million down there. We will bring in the coming years another 170 companies into the heart of the city of Glasgow, complementing what we already do. We set up new clusters in health technology, fintech, quantum technology, industrial informatics, 5G communications, and space science and engineering. And through the use of useful learning, we also offer business and industry the tools that they need to be more innovative and to promote economic growth, creating jobs in this wonderful city and this part of Scotland, providing us all with a higher quality of life, which is both sustainable and healthy. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, Strathclyde provides people with the opportunity to transform their lives and the lives of their families. As I mentioned earlier, we still attract many first-generation students to Strathclyde. And those are some of the reasons that we've had a terrific sequence of externally uh, validated awards, seeing what we do and how we do it. And in recent years, over the past five years or so, we've had a string of recognition at the UK Times Higher Education Awards, which have included the UK University of the Year, the Entrepreneurial University of the Year, Business School of the Year, Workplace of the Year, which I particularly welcome, which reflects how we do our business. Last year, the Herald, uh, uh, the Herald newspaper awarded us the Higher Education Institution of the Year. And just last month, uh, the Sunday Times Good University Guide, we were named the Scottish University of the Year for 2020. And keep your fingers crossed, because at the end of this month, we've been shortlisted yet again for UK University of the Year, reflecting the fantastic work of my staff and the quality of our students. So Strathclyde continues to demonstrate a disproportionate impact on society and economy, principally students, graduates, through you. Whilst we do fantastic research, whilst we engage with the public private sector, it's you that are our historical contributions to society. It's what you do, your skills, your ambitions, the ethical way in which you will apply your expertise. That makes the difference and that's what propagates Strathclyde's reputation globally. And we remain to be a driver for sustainable economic growth, and we have a very distinct role in that key national objective. The Scottish Government 
uh, puts about £1.2 billion into the Scottish university sector, but in return, the universities contribute almost £7 billion back into the Scottish economy. That's an investment. And certainly, the achievements of the students and staff in our Faculty of Engineering throughout the last year gives me great cause for optimism. And I can only give you some truncated highlights in what's been an outstanding year for the faculty. I mentioned that we'd launched the uh, Scotland's first innovation district. Uh, that will drive over the next seven or eight years about a billion pounds of gross value add to the uh, economy here in the west of Scotland, creating about 4,000 jobs and making Glasgow a referenceable international place for high tech and for growth in the new technologies areas. We were also named as the anchor university for the new National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland, being built out at Glasgow Airport. The Scottish Government, Renfrew Council, and other agencies such as Scottish Enterprise and Innovate UK, investing around £185 million of assets that we will own on behalf of a broader community of industry, academic and public sector partners, working in the Industry 4.0 areas for aerospace, automotive, energy and applying what we do best, uh, applied research based on excellent knowledge and connectivity to industry. But our work goes well beyond these major infrastructure investments. Here at Strathclyde, a new technique has been developed uh, for blood monitoring, uh, looking at the chemistry levels in premature and sick babies. You may have seen in the press in the past month, this is hoping to eliminate the need for invasive blood tests driven by our teams in biomedical engineering. In the same department, a virtual emergency consultation programme for eye patients is on trial. This new approach is leading to quicker treatments and removed, or has removed the need for follow-up hospital appointments in more than half the cases. The tele-ophthalmology system developed by Strathclyde and NHS Forth Valley uses a live video feed to securely connect doctors, opticians and patients where these diagnostics and examinations can be done remotely. Our students uh, from across the faculty have installed yet another solar-powered energy system in schools in the Gambia. The Cambodia village is the 12th to have benefited from the installation of off-grid solar systems as part of our Gambia solar project since it began over 12 years ago. And to date, the solar school systems installed by Strathclyde have helped to improve the educational outcomes and experience for approximately 5,500 children, providing the electricity to power light bulbs, fans, mobile phone charging, laptops and TVs. And having been to Malawi myself a number of times, the youngsters' thirst for education is absolutely exciting. And if we can make sure that they can study after dark, after the work that they've done to help their families in subsistence farming, that gets them to high school, which completely translates their life opportunities. Our students have also been in Rwanda, testing new smart grid controllers to help their people trade electricity. How exciting is that? The device connects solar energy systems in many households in the nor northern village of Morambi, creating a microgrid, and individuals can then buy and sell their energy for each other using mobile telephones. Again, our biomedical engineers have developed a technology underpinning a new rapid and cost-effective test for the early diagnosis of sepsis, a killer in society. We understand that, and that's much better understood by our health professionals. In our Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, uh, the project is looking at making space technology more sustainable. A project called the Stardust Reloaded Programme is con a continuation now into its fifth year of projects that began about five years ago, looking at new techniques for uh, asteroid and space debris monitoring, removal and deflection. Truly a horizon technology. And the uh, engineering professors, Rebecca Lunn, MBE, of uh, the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department and Graham Wren, OBE, uh, one of the senior engineering advisors in the university, were both recognized for their outstanding contributions by becoming fellows of the Royal Academy of Engineering. And I could go on, but won't. Uh, this is a faculty on the up doing outstanding work and uh, in which these fantastic students and now graduates have uh, spent a few years. That's the exciting context in which you should view your awards. You're now graduates of a university that places students in the heart of everything that we do, valuing excellent education and research and creating strong, relevant activities with society at large, as well as with business and industry. And with regard to internationalization, every great university competes, collaborates, and contributes on in the international stage. We are no different. 
our key strategic partners. I mean, we have around 200 international relationships, about a dozen key strategic partnerships. And in America, those include Stanford, MIT, and New York University, with growing partnerships with Waterloo in Canada and the University of Southern California. In China, uh, amongst many, our principal partners are Tsinghua University in Beijing, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, in Singapore, the Nanyang Technological University and the National University of Singapore, and a raft of deep relationships across Europe. In spite of the flux of Brexit, we must continue to demonstrate the value of shared mission, uh, the European spirit of collaboration, transferring people, ideas, investing together in the future. Science and engineering research depends on that scale of investment, and we intend to continue to show the value and respect of collaboration across these borders, regardless of the noise that we hear outside the doors of this university. And of course, our students themselves benefit directly from being part of an international university. It helps them emerge with the skills necessary to help themselves, indeed Scotland, to play a full part in the world. And our students themselves have been exposed to the richness of different cultures and traditions. And most importantly, graduates, you leave here today understanding your obligations as global citizens. But of course, we're a grounded university here in this fantastic city of Glasgow. I have the privilege of chairing the Glasgow Economic Leadership Board, which is a consortium of business leaders working in partnership with the city itself, academic contributors to try and recapture the excitement and the scale of what the traders and the merchants did in Glasgow at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. We were part of the bid that brought £1.2 billion into this city as part of the Glasgow City deal, helping to build jobs, build competitive advantage and international status. And I talked to you earlier about us being socially progressive. I'm proud on behalf of the great work that my staff do to remain the leading Scottish research intensive university for attracting young people into a widening participation programmes uh, that is students from some of the most challenged communities in Scotland. And once again, this year, over 1,100 of uh, young people from the bottom two quintiles in socioeconomic measures have come to Strathclyde. The doors in this university are wide open. What we need is aspiration, hard work and ability. And if you have that, you come into this university to experience our degree programmes. And in spite of all of that, uh, the common wisdom is that we must be lowering standards. Not a bit of it. Last year we were announced, last month I should say, we were announced as having the joint fifth highest entrance requirements in the UK. Not in Scotland, but in the UK. So we can bring people of aspiration that uh, need uh, help to uh, attain a university place and still maintain standards. And I should tell you graduates, my first graduation ceremony every year is with the Children's University. I'm the Chancellor of the Children's University. And this is to get young people whose families don't have much experience of higher education. They come here, uh, these youngsters age 5 to 14, get a digital passport. So if they go to night classes, they get a wee digital stamp on their passport. They go to Kelvin Grove Art Gallery. They'll get a stamp at the Glasgow Science Centre, the Hamden Sports Museum. And eventually when they fill up, fill up their digital passport, they come here and get a bachelor's degree from the Children's University. So they come here with their gowns and their mortarboards and march across the stage. I particularly enjoy it because it's one of the few graduation ceremonies where I look tall momentarily. I was getting repetitive stress injury later on, uh, earlier on in this uh, conversation. But uh, if they stick in for another couple of years, attain more, they'll come for a silver award, effectively a master's degree from the Children's University. And if they keep going until they're about 14, they'll get a PhD from the Children's University. And that's what's coming my staff's way when these youngsters, full of life, uh, full of vigour and their families full of expectation that universities are every bit uh, of their world as well as those that uh, perhaps can afford it more readily. So let me move to a conclusion. If I characterise our university, your university in 2019, I would describe it as having ambition, focus and momentum with the necessary agility and commitment to delivering our strategy even in these times of uncertainty. We've been around for over 200 years We've faced more flux and uncertainty than this before, and we'll be around, God willing, for another 200 years plus. Uh, if we focus on our independent thought, our ambition, uh, the ability to make a difference, that will take all of us through. It's a great privilege for me to lead this wonderful institution with the great support I get from our executive team, as well as from our broader community of academics, 
professional services and support staff. I truly believe if John Anderson could see what we're doing now, he would recognise this as the realisation of his ambitions to, uh, to the establishment of this place during the Enlightenment. And we now seek in this modern society to be an agent for positive change in Glasgow, across Scotland and on the world stage. So to all of you here in the Barony Hall, I'm certain that today's graduates will have an enormous impact, not just for themselves, but for society at large. And 2019 can truly be a vintage year. And with that in mind, as you leave today, leave not only with your award, but the recognition that you have a responsibility. As today's graduates, you're joining an international community of over 170,000 Strathclyders. And please remember that we're, wherever you go with your degree and wherever you decide to pursue your career, useful learning means that you apply your knowledge for the benefit of others, you make a positive impact for yourselves and the communities that you belong to, respect diversity, value freedom of expression and thought, and reach conclusions and resolve disputes through reason and tolerance. These characterise the core values of your university. And with regard to today's celebration, we're here to mark the outstanding achievements for each and every one of you. On behalf of the Strathclyde University, I'd like to extend my sincere congratulations to you all and wish you every success in your future careers. Please stay in touch with us. Let us know what you're doing. Well done again, and please enjoy the rest of this very special day. Thank you very much. talked a lot about digital control there. My colleague Fiona has given me the digital signal of the thumbs up that the weather is good, that we can process over to the Lord Todd Hall, which is about 100 yards off to the right. Do come at the end of the ceremony over for a refreshment and for a chance to meet and chat to the new graduates. Once again, graduates, many congratulations, family, friends, supporters. It's great to have you here uh, and we look forward to seeing you shortly. With that, I will declare the congregation closed and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.